Did you start watching my video before I was ready to record? Shame on you. I like that you can sneak in to get that one up. You don't need to go the obvious way by breaking the bricks and getting hurt. Excuse us, we're having a night at the Roxbury moment here. I'm giving you fair warning right now so that you can brace yourself. The show that you were about to behold. It's okay. I mean, a lot of the stuff I do in this stage might still be fun to look at, but some of it might be more technically impressive than ooh-ah. <laughs> he turned around! You're not supposed to turn around. <clears throat> I see this a lot in Mega Man games, when you've got two or more ladders leading up out of a screen. Technically impressive! If you go to the right, you'll progress through the rest of the stage, but if you go to the left, you'll hit a dead end with a power-up. This is true in Solar Man stage in Mega Man 10, Castle stages in Mega Man 4, 6, and 9, and, sort of, Crash Man stage in Mega Man 2. But this... <laughs> well... This is not something that you see all the time. Most people would pass up this opportunity to goof around and show off in order to recklessly plow through the stage. They're wild-eyed pistol wavers who ain't afraid to die, but all I want to do is dance. You know, with a little bit of caution and a lot of bit of rush jet adapter, you can get through this stage without too much trouble, which is why... <laughs> which is why I let him live. Because my buttons would never stick when I try and jump and fire at the same time. <sighs> but at least I get to go off. Be free! Be free! Okay, he's free. I'm a pacifist! Okay, okay, okay. By this point in the game, most of the weapons you have will outclass Yam Spear, except in specific situations. So for general use, it's best to adopt the college application mentality. Fire off enough and you're bound to make an impact eventually. Speaking of mostly useless birds, Beat has one potentially redeeming quality that isn't actually present in Mega Man 5. Beat can instantly destroy any enemy of any size, provided he's got enough weapon energy to do it. And provided he can damage that enemy at all. The only problem is that by the time you get Beat, there aren't a whole lot of huge enemies that you could really use his help with. That was pretty slick there, picking up that power up in the air, but this... <laughs> is slicker. <laughs> <laughs> that trick never gets old to me. I always enjoy doing that. And it's one of the finest ways to show off, I think. Pinpoint, precise jumping. Accuracy is also good. But jumping is nice. Yeah, very nice. Getting to the boss doors has always been a treat for me. Not because I get to fight the boss, but because I get to leap through them in any nonsensical way I please. Some of the later Mega Man games, like Mega Man ZX, don't let you do things like this. It would trigger a generic running animation, and that's no met flying into a giant battle body. It's very clear that the Mega Man games have been influenced by Japanese animation. Just take Mega Man 8, for example, that wants to be a Japanese animation instead of a good game. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. We haven't even played that yet. But it's very clear. You've got Astro Boy, you've got Kashan, and you've got this, which is an obvious reference to Mazinga Z! Or so I'm told. Huh? Uh, um, huh? Uh, I'm out of ammo! Or am I? Ha! Oh, ho, 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 ho. tricky. I was hoping to fight this battle entirely on the ground without jumping, but now I need to improvise. But it's okay, because I'm awesome! Ah, getting hit! Ha ha ha! Look at me be awesome and damaged. That's sad. You know what I completely forgot to talk about? The platforms in that stage that sink when you stand on them and rise up on the other side at an equal rate? Kind of like the ones in Mega Man 4 in that boss battle where the wall attempts to attack you! And succeeds! Any tangent, the platforms are great. Good, solid platforming challenge. But they're in the wrong game. Jet Adapter makes them eep! Jet Adapter makes them eep! Jet Adapter makes them easy! But not only that, excuse me, coming through, makes them irrelevant. No incentive to play the honest way. Hang on! Yes! Oh, maximum awesome! Okay, you can hang off now. Hang off. Ugh, this is almost as bad as the castle stages in Mega Man 3. Just give the power-ups away already. Laziness should not be the only deterrent to getting an E-Tank. A little bit of risk or challenge eh, should be involved somewhere. Check it out. Foresight. I don't mind a couple of handouts. This game has too many. Look, Mega Man runs on Xbox. Ha. 
there you go. Proof that Windstorm can destroy an enemy outright instead of just flinging it up into parts unknown, you know, aside from the bosses. Oh, some nice pinpoint shooting here. And these eggs that turn into birds do leave power-ups if you hit them with Windstorm. It's just incredibly rare. Kind of like me getting through a video without making a horrible pun. Oh, uh, look! More freebies. Despite whatever criticism I may have for this castle, it's not a bad castle. It's a little underwhelming, it's not my favorite, but it's still fun, it's still enjoyable, and you can tell that the developers were trying, they just got a little uncreative in some parts, or they underestimated the gaming ability of Mega Manners. Mega Manners? What are Mega Manners? Thank you for dying show off -tastically. Not screaming and yelling about getting hit because I'm minding my pea chips in queues? Mega Manners. This room's kind of boring. It could use some redecoration. Maybe add some stairs, throw in a couple ladders, knock out the right wall. There, that's a good start. Conceptually, this split path works really well, and as I'm talking about it through this section, I'm going to be showing off a lot, so watch for that even if I don't call out anything specific, because I have to blather. Conceptually, you've got a great choice. The lower path gives you a wide-open room with a high possibility of falling into a bottomless pit and dying instantly, but the upper route gives you close quarters fighting and theoretically a larger chance of being destroyed due to excess damage from all these enemies. However, in reality, the top path gives you a freebie one-up and the lower path gives you nothing. The lower path gives you enemies who could very well knock you into a bottomless pit and make you die, and the top path doesn't do that. Both enemies in both places do the same amount of damage. The only difference is that the ones on the top path are much easier to kill. It's a cakewalk. So your option here is cake or death? Sounds like an Eddie Izzard routine. It is an Eddie Izzard routine. Ah, sharpshooting. Or more accurately, chucking my fireball water balloons. Fire balloons. I decided to improvise here to pit bird versus bird, but then I changed my mind. I usually plan these things better. Wow. This is the end of the stage! And, and, and this is the final stage! This is the end of the game! Through these doors! It's the final boss! But wait a second, don't we have to refight all the robot masters? And where's my final boss music? Something feels off. Yeah, maybe it's my imagination. I'm sure Capcom would never try to deceive us. Would they? Ah oh, well. Now I'm gonna use Mr. X as a punching bag. This is actually really effective if you can get into a groove. You just need to throw your punches a little bit sooner. Ooh, that was close. Then it looks like you should. His bounding box is kind of funny. Just plant myself here. Oh, how embarrassing. He fell right into my trap. My scheme for world domination has fa fa failed, but I still have enough power to destroy proper spelling. Oh, hey, it's Dr. Wo what? Dr. Wily? Wait a second. That can only mean one thing. Let the wiggly eyebrows begin. Wait for it. He'll come by in a spaceship taxi and he'll wiggle his eyebrows. Wait for it. Wait for it. What? Did he wiggle his eyebrows without me noticing? He so did! Oh, this guy's going down! Hey, hey, now here is an enemy-based challenge that works pretty well. Whoa. The combination of enemies gives you a lot of things to focus on at once, and the way the level architecture is structured, it kind of pins you in and gives the enemies the advantage. It's also obnoxious and messy. I prefer my stages to have clean, elegant solutions to the platforming problems, and that's not always the case up there. But it is a challenge, and that's got to count for something. I'm not sure if this was intentional, but hibbity -ha! Um, hibbity -ha is always intentional but it seems like several portions of the castle stages are a tribute to the Robot Master stages. Boom. This feels like a restructured Windman stage, and the beginning of the next stage is a lot like Blizzard Man. The one after that starts out a lot like, oh, I missed Centaur Man. So there are some similarities, but maybe it's just lack of inspiration. Who knows? I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. Woo, woo, woo. Ooh, that was really close. Ha, huh, quick rest. Moving on. I like that this is a vertical section. Falling makes it even better. alley -oop. And hold that sound effect. Hey, ugly. <laughs> All right, so this screen is very tough. You gotta pause, take a look. <laughs> Stop doing that. All right, so overall, I'm pretty pleased with the design of this stage. Could have used an enemy right here. That would have set it off nicely. But overall, I really enjoyed it. And in fact, I had so much fun with the vertical section that I want to go back and play it again. Hey, come on, you know me. I wouldn't pass up the mystery of what is behind the cracked box. I was standing right in front of it. How could I pass this up? 
This path is particularly sneaky. Oh, ah, uh, feign surprise. Yeah, what are you guys doing here? This power-up filled path is considerably easier than the other one, but the amount of skill and effort required to get into here in the first place just about balances that out. Plus, there's a high chance that you're going to miss all of these power-ups anyhow. So at best, this path is a way to reward players who are playing well, and at worst, it's an excuse to get out of some challenging screens on the other side. Spikes, high five! Here we are back at our generic junction, and the screen to the left that I was talking about, I believe, could benefit from one of these Ben K enemies, which, if I understand it correctly, is named after a famous Japanese warrior monk, if you can believe anything you hear on the internet. Of course, I don't think anyone ever flew over his head with a jetpack, but, you know, it can't all be historically accurate. I'm rambling. Beat should have enough energy to instant kill this squid with my help. Beat, barely even adequate teammate. Sneak attack! Geez, are these guys on lunch break, or are they just expecting Mega Man to play through the stage in reverse? And furthermore, there should have been three of those guards outside the door. The level architecture is in such a way that it's just begging for more enemies. Ah, well, a not really blemish on an otherwise pretty well designed stage. Ah, for this boss, I'm gonna slide into. Never mind. I'm gonna use Yam Spear. Oh no, we are not treating each other shot for shot. You can use the Mega Buster, but I prefer this weapon, because even though it's tougher to aim, as long as you're not firing wildly, this guy goes down pretty quickly if you use your weapon sparingly. If sparingly. Wee-ha! Mega Man, the twitchy Dino Dragon Slayer! You know, I've been giving this some thought, and... I don't think that Mr. X was actually a very convincing deception. If Dr. Wily really wanted to convince us that Mr. X was a totally different person, he could have at least disguised his voice a little. Also, what was Wily's plan for world domination if I could ruin it by destroying a spiked ball machine swinging from a chain in a room that's hard to get to in the depths of a castle nobody's heard of? Not Dr. Wily's finest hour. I don't need that E-Tank, I got plenty of them. As it turns out, you can do this with that boss I just fought, punching his platforms back at him. Interesting! Good way to fight him. I like that sound effect. And you know what's sad, aside from not talking about how fancy all that dodging just was, is the fact that there are barely any new sound effects in this game. I mean, I love the old ones, especially these. Ha 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 ha! Little victory dance! Victory! Okay. But you know that something's missing when almost all the weapons make the same exact noise. Yeah. That's exactly it. Oh, don't you dare get angry at me. No, 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 I don't want to be followed by a mob. Get me out of here! If only I had a way to defend myself! Oh, and that guy just ran off, and he's probably going to tell more of his friends to come and chase me! Maybe he's getting a sandwich. Freebie E-Tank! Oh, that tears it! Wait a second. I'm Mega Man! Pfft, forget this! Flame! Yeah, that's more like it. Ah, so many freebies! Periodic energy refills are okay to prevent you from grinding for power-ups, but... I don't really need this one. <laughs> there is an alternate exit to this room that a lot of people don't notice. And I just walked on nothing. Nice. Nice rhymes with ice. Ice would have made this an almost passable challenge through here. I'm starting to run out of ways to make firing at an enemy right in front of me seem interesting. At least a little slip sliding around would be good. Well, that was pretty good, too. Ah! Who put this random patch of ice here? It would have made sense a little earlier on when the whole stage still looked like a meat locker, but what is it doing here? It serves no purpose, there's no challenge to it. It makes that little section really fun to run through backwards, but it's not practical. I demand to know who's making my game extra fun for no apparent reason. Maybe they just want you to slide off the edge. Fabricated peril. All right, I'm gonna have some fun with the jet adapter. Sit back and enjoy. Oh yeah! That is how we should be using Jet Adapter. Not as a substitute for Rush Coil, but as a powerful utility that can get us into all sorts of stupid situations. An entire stage based around Jet Adapter and even Power Adapter challenges would have been fantastic. Not only would these utilities have been able to live up to their full potential, but it would help to further distinguish Mega Man 6 as something other than just another fun encore of Mega Man 4. Okay, boss time is over. Can it be pizza time now? No, no, it's Wily Whomping time now. Here we go now, we're entering the penultimate stage. And then it will be pizza time.